So my my intent here is to sort of give you a sense of uh, our vision and strategy for the product. I lead the strategy team uh, for OTM and GTM. So over the next hour or so, I'll walk you through what our sort of a near term to mid term uh, roadmap looks like in various areas. Uh, I'm hoping I can get through the slides quickly and leave time for questions since that might be more fruitful, uh, but I do have a lot of content here, so I will try and go through it quick. All right, so that's me, like I just said. Safe Arbor, since the much of this is roadmap. Uh, and before we get going, just wanted to give you a sense of the, you know, the lay of the land, if you will. And I must say the last couple of years have been quite challenging. And indeed, uh, this year is shaping up to be no different. Uh, not only is the pandemic still going on in many parts of the world, we are also still facing all the shortages and challenges like, the, like Jim talked about, you know, chip shortage if even affecting our hardware availability and so on. And there is obviously capacity shortages and labor shortages going on in the supply chain, uh, leading to you know, fairly challenging circumstances for supply chain professionals. And we not only had geopolitical tensions uh, at elevated levels already, now we have a full-fledged war going on in Europe and you know, hopefully it resolves and doesn't get any worse, but that certainly has impacted uh, supply chains all across the world. And in addition to that, with all the sanctions and tariffs uh, that are in play, obviously global trade has been affected in a big way. Indeed, uh, I think one of the benefits of a product like GTM, which is highly configurable and flexible, is that you can actually be nimble when these things happen, when these sudden changes happen and account for them very easily within the product. Uh, but needless to say, uh, supply chain disruptions galore and uh, input prices are rising, uh, inflation, of course, and then also with all the supply chain dis disruptions uh, in input commodity costs have also gone up. And to top it all, you know, the economy is actually doing well, at least in, in the US and demand is uh, surging. But of course, while demand has gone up, uh, demand patterns have changed. The nature of the demand has changed. So you need to be nimble and be able to react to that. So I'm sure none of this is new to all of you guys. Uh, anybody in the supply chain space uh, certainly you know, is impacted and is fully aware of all that. Now, the good thing is uh, it's become easier to explain what we do to the lay person because everybody now knows what supply chain is. Uh, previously, I would have to explain what the supply chain meant but now you don't need to do that anymore. And indeed uh, for you know, products like OTM, GTM, indeed any supply chain management system, the need for companies to adopt a digitally connected enterprise grade supply chain management system has never been greater. It is, you know, if you have one and I hopefully everybody in the room has one, uh, it, it, you, you should be thankful because uh, you need it right now. All right, uh, now, having said all that, the, the definition of what you need to do is actually very simple. You just need to get everything right. You need to know who your customers are. You need to be able to get the right products in the right quantity at the right time in the right condition to them. So as such, the, you know, the objective is, is simple, but obviously that's easier said than done. And this is not easy to get right. Uh, but you have something going for you, which is you have the best in class trade and transportation platform at your disposal. And so this is what I'm gonna be talking about, mainly our cloud solution and giving you a sense of where we are going with our trade and transportation platform. Uh, but it is, uh, if you have this already, and I hope you do, it is uh, 
you know, the best there is and clearly uh, will help you get all those things right uh, if you're able to uh, model your supply chain in, in this platform. All right. So having talked about the market in general, let's talk about where we are with OTM and GTM. Uh, it has been, uh, uh, you know, in terms of momentum, it has been a great year for us, uh, the last year, uh, both in terms of customer growth, uh, which has been, you know, going uh, well as, uh, as always with the cloud. And also with customer go lives, we have <clears throat> seen uh, you know more and more customers going live every week on their cloud system. So we are very encouraged and uh, uh, look forward to working with our live customers to capture go live stories and so on. And also from a product perspective, uh, as Jim talked about, we have the ABC sequence of drops every year. And so there's been a lot of innovation already delivered in the product. Uh, and uh, I will talk about some of it as I go through this presentation here. You've also heard from Kathy, Brian, and Jim about some of it. There's also copious documentation on all the capabilities, new capabilities in each release that's available on our um, uh, oracle.com website. So it's all publicly available and go review it all. So lots of good work. Uh, in addition, lots of partner momentum and I'll show you a couple of slides on that here. Uh, and as always, we continue to be proud of the fact that we are the leaders in the magic quadrant and the Garten, Gartner magic quadrant. And I have a couple of slides here showing you our relative position uh, that is from last year's, uh, but the, we are on the cusp of the next, this year's magic quadrant coming out. And we've had an early view as to, you know, our positioning there. And it, uh, it continues to be uh, very good as, as we've always been uh, on the magic quadrant. And uh, Jim talked about this briefly. We are also very excited about the Gen 2 cloud. Uh, that all our new customers are being deployed on and we continue to look to migrate all our uh, existing customers to, to the new infrastructure too. Uh, customer momentum uh, has also been tremendous, as I said, and to give you a few logos, we pulled out uh, some of the logos of customers who have presented at public conferences recently. And then you'll also see several logos there of folks who presented as part of this conference too. So you can see there's a pretty wide variety of folks uh, across the globe. Uh, so really uh, broad uh, representation of our customer base there, shippers and logistics service providers. And speaking of partner momentum, uh, we you know we have the broadest partner ecosystem in the in the space, and we are uh, very happy about that. We we love our partners, and we want to work with all our partners to enable them uh, to offer their services and solutions uh, to our customers. As a customer, this is good for you because you get a choice as to who best fits your need and best services you. So this is important to our customers too. And then from a solution on ISV provider uh, perspective, again, you know, tremendous momentum there uh, of partners who want to work with your OTM GTM platform and extend it. Uh, and offer you sort of a, a more complete solution by complementing it with their capabilities. Again, this is a testament to our success in the market and the ability for our partners to find value in, in sort of doing things to help our customers do more with their product. All right, speaking of the magic quadrant, uh, this is the, like I said, this is last year's MQ, the new MQ. 
doesn't look too different from this. It looks quite similar to this. Uh, we are in a great position. Uh, obviously, there's more consolidation in the market, and that will be reflected in the new chart that you see. And uh, you, while you may be aware of the MQ, I don't know how many people know of the Critical Capabilities Report, which is a companion report that Gartner puts out with the Magic Quadrant Report. And they go sort of a level deeper there where they look at various areas or various types of functionality. And they go through all the vendors and they score the vendor on how good they are for each functional area. And then they sort of summarize it for different customers. So they stratify the customers as level one through level five with level one being you know, customers that have the simplest needs and level five being customers that have the most complex needs. And then they, depending on the weightage of the various functional areas, they then sort of come up with a summarized ranking of vendors for level one through level five. And as you can see, we score very well, right? It's a, it gives you a sense of the breadth and depth of the capabilities of the product uh, where we score very well. We are actually the highest for level three to five. We score very well on level two also. So uh, we, we really scale from sort of the simplest to the most complex needs uh, with the product. All right, so having said all that, let me jump into product strategy and roadmap. Now, again, as I go through this roadmap, keep in mind that uh, any feature here is only valuable if it meets our, meets our customers' needs. And so everything that we do in the product is only valuable if it helps our customers do better. And that is the overriding concern. Indeed, pretty much everything that we do in the roadmap, we do either because a customer idea or multiple customers have requested that through our idea labs capabilities where our customers are able to go in and put in the enhancements that they want in the product and other customers are able to also review it and chime in with their comments. And, and that feeds right into our future product releases and, and, and work that we do. So either it's driven directly that way or it's driven in consultation with several customers. So pretty much every feature here has customers behind it. And, and that's the overriding criteria for our roadmap. Now, in terms of the actual capabilities themselves, I've sort of broadly classified them into four buckets here. The first bucket is the, the customer ideas that I talked about. I haven't listed many uh, in this, uh, because there are too numerous to list, but there are, you know, pretty much every release, a significant portion of that, uh, what we do in that release is driven directly by your ideas. Now, on the functional expansion space, this is areas which are either white space, new, new work that we're doing, or significant work in an existing space uh, that we're sort of reworking or broadly expanding so that's sort of what that bucket is. And I have a few slides here around trade agreements and sourcing and the capacity forecasting topic. So I'll, I'll get into that as I go through the presentation here. Uh, another big area of focus for us is disruptive tech. And we do a lot of work in this area. And I have spoken previously about things like the work we've done with our blockchain SaaS product or the IoT SaaS product. And I have not touched upon it in this deck, even though they continue to be areas of investment and focus uh, for us. Uh, but I do talk about some of the work in the AI ML space and the chatbot space. But uh, you know, it is important to recognize that there is a broad amount of work that's going on for us to make sure that you have the right you are able to take advantage of the right disruptive technology out there in order to enhance your transportation or global trade business process. And that's how you, as I, I will show you this, you will see that 
it's not that you need to be a data scientist to take advantage of machine learning. Our job here is to take advantage of that technology and bring it to you in the context of your business process. And that's what we've done with all of this uh, disruptive tech. And then finally, there is a, a, a tremendous amount of work in all the different sort of functional areas. And I haven't covered every one of this in this deck. Uh, the presentation is meant to really call out the highlights, uh, but we continue to work on things like mobile apps and business intelligence and in the integration space and user experience and, and planning and execution and settlement and so on. And, and you'll see uh, some of the work in, in the slides coming up, but there is, uh, a lot of work that goes on in the product with every release. Uh, and, and to really get a sense for the work, you have to go review our what's new and new feature summary documents that's posted with every release. All right, let's jump into it. Let me start with uh, machine learning. <clears throat> and machine learning is something that, uh, you know, we started on this a few years ago now. Uh, we felt that has really matured to the point where it's not just a uh, consumer facing, you know, we all do machine learning every day in our lives whenever we do, you know, Google searching or, or talk to our chatbots and what have you, there's machine learning embedded in there. But we, we felt that this technology has really come to the fore to the point where it makes sense to leverage within our business applications also. Uh, you know, it is a little bit uh, uh, cutting edge, if you will, for, for some of our customers, but we are seeing more and more of our customers really leaning forward and looking into how they can take advantage of this capability. We have customers who have done this on their own and also customers who are looking to Oracle to leverage these sort of capabilities and make it available to them. And I'll talk about some of that as I go through this here. Uh, we see tremendous opportunity across the product for this. So it's not just in the work that we've already done, but there's also other areas where I think machine learning will really help us. And, and I'll talk about some of that as I walk you through here. But what we decided to start with, and this, this you know, we, we started here in consultation with our cab customers who pointed to ETA prediction as being sort of a key feature for which they would like machine learning uh, to be utilized. So we started looking at that ETA problem a couple of years ago, I would say. Uh, there is already in OTM now available uh, a lot of capabilities for you to do ETA prediction using uh, using uh, machine learning. So it's in the product already. So it is not a roadmap item. When we started looking at this sort of and sort of went through the details, we felt there were several areas of ETA prediction that was needed. So the very first one there around what we call planned ETA <clears throat> is actually available already as of uh, 21A in, in your product. So if uh, all our customers are on 21A, you should all have the capability to do the planned ETA prediction already. And what that refers to is, is the ability for us to give you a prediction as soon as your shipment is planned. It doesn't even need to start executing. You don't need to get any other information about it. As soon as your shipment is planned, not only will you get the planned arrival time that we automatically generate as part of that plan, but you can also get a predicted arrival time, which will you know, give you the ability to actually see if, is it, you know, given what's been going on in my network, do I predict, does machine learning anticipate that it will be on time? And if not, should you do something about that? We actually do two predictions here. We predict as soon as it is planned and we use your planned departure time at the source location to drive that prediction at the destination, the predicted ETA at the destination. But you can also re-predict once you actually depart from the source location. 
So there are two predictions that are provided from this model. One, initially when you plan it, and also second, you can again re-predict when you actually depart from, from the source location. So that's available now, you can go use it. And I'll talk about uh, some of our customers who have used it. And we've seen very good results with our prototypes driven from real customer data uh, for this model. We've also now, and this comes in 22B. So as you get 22B, this will be available to you. We have the ability to give you predictions with every in-transit event that you get on that shipment after it has departed the source location. So as you get tracking events in, with every tracking event, you can not only recalculate sort of the estimated ETA, which was already available in OTM, now you can calculate a predicted ETA at the destination. So that is coming in 22B, and again, you know, our experiments with real customer data has been very encouraging here. And I, you know, when you get it, uh, I encourage everyone to go try it out and check it out for themselves. Now, there is another thing that we would like to do in the roadmap, which is being able to predict at order time itself against the order itself. So even before you plan it into shipments, when you get the order, can we predict the transportation lead time for you? And that's something that we'd like to work on as part of our roadmap. And it's often important because it helps you shape your operations and even potentially may lead you to promise the order or shape how you promise the order to the customer if you had an accurate idea of what the transportation lead time for that order will be. It's, it's not that different from what the shipment model is. It's a little bit more complicated, but we do plan to get to that. Now, one thing I should point out is already in the product is the capability for you to incorporate environmental data, extraneous data. Indeed, some of our customers use things like airport congestions or port congestion data to drive their machine learning predictions. And you can do that in OTM. We've given you the capability already in the product for you to incorporate environmental data as part of the prediction. All right. And when I say machine learning is an OTM, it's not like it's a, it's a data science experiment. And you don't really need to be machine learning data science experts to do this. We have done all that work for you. As an end user, you get to actually leverages, leverage it as part and parcel of your business process. So right on your shipment data is available all the details about the predicted transit time and the predicted ETA. And you can look at it, you can drive alerts, you can drive age and actions off it. You can you know, resolve anticipated exceptions based on that information. It's right there as part of your transactional information in the system. Indeed, not only is that there, but also we provide a, a bunch of analytics data for you to understand exactly what is going on and how is that machine learning model behaving. Uh, so all of this data is captured made available to you in the analytics space. We also have pre-packaged some dashboards. So this is an example of a pre-packaged dashboard that shows you some of that underlying data that's driving your machine learning models. And of course, you can write additional analytics reports for yourselves to slice and dice the data as you need to. So very powerful amount of information available all within OTM for you. Now, why machine learning in, in, in OTM in, in the Oracle platform? <clears throat> there are many reasons here, but I will go through some of them really quickly. Uh, let's start at the bottom there. And the, the key point there is that we have done all the underlying data modeling, data cleansing, data pipeline work ourselves. You don't need to do much of that. You don't need to be a data scientist. You set it up using business context. You tell me which mode you want to work on, which data set you want to work on, 
and, and a few tuning parameters and, and we take care of all that for you. So very powerful. At the same time, you get to specialize it. You get to say, hey, in, in North America, I want to have a particular model that's tuned to that data, whereas in Europe, I might need a different model that's tuned to that data. So you get that level of control at the, at the business uh, level to specialize the models that you want to use. Second, at the next level up, it's, it's important to understand that our model is actually agnostic to mode. So you can set up and tune your model to the modes that you think is best. And you get a lot of control there. And you can predict on the rail mode, ocean mode, air mode, truck mode, what have you, LTL. One of our customers is looking to leverage it for US LTL transit time. So, so lots of capabilities there. The model works very well. We've tested it against all of these modes with real customer data, and it works very well for all of the modes. So you get to fine tune it and use it across geographies, across modes. Finally, the power is in actually making this actionable. Having a prediction available to you even before the shipment starts moving is very powerful. It lets you take action on that shipment if there is a, a risk that the shipment is not gonna make it on time. And even when the shipment starts moving, the ability to have that data innately in your transportation system, powering your resolutions to exceptions through agent actions and so on is very, very powerful. So all of that is available as part of our machine learning infrastructure. Now roadmap, there's a lot of stuff that's coming that we think uh, machine learning would be very powerful on. And I won't go through all of this stuff. I mean, all the way down to within the bulk plan, right? So talk about using the power of machine learning to drive decision-making inside your bulk plan itself. That's something that we are looking at that I think would be very powerful. But I also wanna to touch upon that last one there, the collaborative machine learning model. We are working with our Oracle Labs team and they have some very interesting techniques, uh, things called federated machine learning models where they're able to look across multiple customers, each customer not sharing any actual data. Every, all their data stays where it, there, where it is, but they can drive the learning across the machine learning models so that you as a customer, in order to predict, get the benefit not only of your data, but of all other customers who are shipping on that lane without actually needing to share any data. So data privacy is maintained, but through federated learning, you can actually learn from everyone's data. So we think that's very, very powerful and something that we're looking to leverage to do collaborative machine, machine learning eventually. All right, so that was machine learning. I probably spent way too much time on that. So I'm gonna speed up a little here. The next disruptive tech I wanted to talk about today was around chatbots and uh, the work that we've done in that space. Again, chatbots is something we use every day. I don't know about you, but I, I tend to use Siri more, more often than I thought I would use it when I first got that capability. So it's something that's become quite uh, normal uh, for us to use. Uh, and again, we think it is actually going to be equally normal for you to use in your business applications. Indeed, it is more powerful than some of our UI technology and mobile app technology because as an end user using a chatbot, you really don't need to understand how uh, an application screens are structured, entities are structured, navigation menus are structured. You can just talk to your phone and speak in plain language, you know, common language, whether it be English or any other language. And the bot figures out what you want, figures out how to navigate the backend application and get you that information. So it's very, very powerful, both for internal users and for external users, especially for external users of yours, so your customers, so that they don't really need to worry about knowing OTM or GTM or anything. They just say, where's my shipment? And we figure that out and tell them. 
indeed, that's the first use case that's already available in the product. So this is something that's available to you to go now and use. And you can go and use our uh, logistics digital assistant and ask for exactly that, you know, where's my stuff? And it will find out, it will know who you are, go back in the back end using our REST API calls and bring you that information and present it to you in a nice, easy to understand manner. I've, uh, there's a link there that's sort of a two minute video demo uh, that you can go check it out, you know, once you get the presentation. Now, again, we think there's a lot of key, uh, opportunities here uh, and we do intend to continue building out some of these capabilities, especially on the action front. So for example, being able to schedule a doc appointment, your carrier being able to talk to his mobile phone and say, find me an appointment for the shipment and receive an appointment back via the chatbot. You know, those sort of capabilities, I think would be very, very exciting to have. Or one of the things we are looking at is embedding the bot into the mobile app so that when the driver pulls into the dock, we are able to reach out to the driver automatically and say, hey, Mr. Driver, I see you arrive. Shall I submit the arrive event for you? Right? And the driver just says yes. And of course, the arrived event. So I think there is a lot of opportunity here to do more with the bot. But I did want to point out that the bot is fully extensible already. So with our tremendous REST API capabilities that we have with OTM already, you can actually write most of these use cases yourself, and it's not very technically difficult to extend the bot to do this. And indeed, uh, as I will show you next, uh, some of our customers have done it already. And Western Digital presented recently both on their usage of machine learning and of digital, uh, our digital assistant and this presentation is available to you. It'll be in the presentation. So you can go take a look at the, the video uh, that they presented. And you can see that you know, on the machine learning front, we really improve the ETA prediction accuracy much over what they were getting uh, from their carrier or other means using our machine learning models. And on the bot front, like I said, they've actually extended beyond our capabilities and they've actually extended to do things like, uh, uh, you know, custom status lookup for the order, compliance uh, uh, code lookup uh, for the order and so on. And they've made it all available over Teams, uh, which is a channel that they added. So not only can you extend what the bot does, you can also extend the channels over which it communicates. So a lot of that is extensible. And they've made it available. And this has saved them a lot of time for their users from having to respond to all the inquiries around things like export status and so on, because now you can do it self-service. So the point I wanna make is this is not pie in the sky stuff. This is real stuff that's available in the product and customers can use it now and customers are using it. So if you would like to do it, please do reach out to us. We will be glad to help you get going with it. And for all our partners in the room, you know, this is stuff that's available for you to go enable your customers to do. So go ahead and do it. And if you need any help on any of it, let us know. All right, let's move on to UX. And you saw from Kathy, uh, all the work that's been done in the new enhanced workbench. And it, I must say it looks, it, you know, it, it, the name is, is well justified. If you love workbenches, you will love enhanced workbenches even more. They're really nice to work with. Look and feel is nice. Performance is snappy, really fast. So very good. Uh, lots of work done, lots of work coming. Right, so there are still a few things that we need to do uh, that uh, our legacy workbenches do today, and we are looking to cover all those gaps. Uh, so there's a lot more investment coming in the workbench capabilities. I don't know if Kathy talked about the edit load config capabilities. Now you can actually edit your load config right from within the enhanced workbench itself. So there's a lot of nice capabilities there. Uh, in addition to all the new Gantt charts that were added. There is more we'd like to do, like the drag drop to Gantt charts and stuff that you know, will be important and we will continue doing that. 
But let me talk about one interesting thing that we are like that we'd like to get done, and we are starting in the early stages to look at it, is the ability to embed content from external apps, apps external to OTM GTM, right within the workbench. And this extends to other Oracle apps. For example, you know, if you use our IoT platform, uh, they have a lot of really nice visualizations about the shipment, about the container, about the status of the freight, the various uh, sensors. They have a, what's called a digital twin representation of your fleet. It would be nice to see all that within the context of the shipment right at the workbench without having to go log into that their app and, and check it out there. So that's the goal here is to actually let you click on a parent object, maybe a shipment, and be able to show you relevant information about it in a child pane so that you get contextual information from other sources that you might need to make to drive this decisions on that shipment and when when we are looking to extend this to partner apps too so imagine being able to get risk data or heat maps on capacity or cost uh, right there uh, at your disposal in the workbench and being able to drive all your decision making that way so again, very exciting stuff that, you know, I think we'll find tremendous value for once we're able to do that. Also very quickly, I wanted to touch on the mobile app, which, uh, you know, as you guys know, we have a good mobile app now, but we are looking to rewrite it uh, in the Oracle Jet technology and, and provide you more capabilities as we do that. One of the key things that many of our customers have asked for is this barcode, QR code scanning that we are hoping we can get to. But most importantly, what really excites me about the mobile app work is the fact that we are building an infrastructure in which will allow you to actually configure and extend the mobile app. So as you know, that has always been a challenge with sort of the native app that we have right now. Uh, you know, we, we show you certain fields, but if you want to show five other fields about that shipment, it, you have to come back to us or you got to go modify the code. It's, it's a mess. Well, you know, as you can, uh, you know, if you've used OTM, you can, uh, you'll know that we can always configure our screens very easily by going and saying, okay, I don't want to see these fields. I want to add these other fields. Well, this is somewhat similar. You will be able to go in and modify what our mobile app shows, show other bits of information that you might need on various entities. And indeed, as we go through this life cycle here, we're also looking at being able to, for you to be able to add in uh, information to OTM via the mobile app, again, in a configurable manner. So maybe it's information that uh, is coming at a stop level that you wanna add into the shipment, being able to do that by just configuring the mobile app to be able to receive that and, and put it back into OTM. So again, that I think will really add power to this mobile app is letting every customer personalize the mobile app to their use. All right, switching topics now, uh, logistics network modeling. And you know, hopefully most of you are aware of this really powerful capability in OTM, especially in the context of where we are today, right? LNM is fundamental to not only designing your network for operational efficiencies, but also for resilience. And resilience is foremost in people's minds right now with all the supply chain disruptions that are going on. And what it does is it lets you actually do a simulation of your network under different sort of what if changes to the network that you might want to make and runs off your actual data, production data in OTM. Lets you make those changes very easily, runs off real data with your real operational processes and gives you really very nicely digestible information of how your network will perform under these changes. And you can do multiple scenarios and compare them side to side. 
So very powerful capabilities already in the product. Our customers are using it. There have been several presentations already by customers on their use of LNM. Many, many use cases available for you to go enable and try out. We continue to do a lot more work in the LNM space. So uh, one of the things that we're looking to do is sort of extend it to also do fleet scenarios. So that's coming. But rather than talk about that, I wanted to talk about an interesting use of LNM that we are looking at doing on capacity forecasting. And again, this is in a little bit of uh, still in an R&D stage, so we are early in this process, but we are working with customers on this to understand how can we leverage our capabilities to help you forecast transportation capacity needs. So our way of going about this, we looked at it few different approaches, but we think that the approach that makes best, most sense is to do a solution that bridges across supply chain planning and supply chain execution. So what we are doing is we are working with our supply chain planning products to take the forecasts that they build uh, and they consume things like demand forecasts, sales campaigns, and other things and understanding the capabilities of what your supply chain uh, is capable of. You know, where, do you, where can you build? Where can you source goods from? How much goods do you have on hand? They take all that into account and then, then come up with a forecasted plan of how should you manage, how should you flow the goods uh, in order to satisfy your customer demand. Now, what we want to do or what we're looking to do is take that forecast in use LNM to then, and these, what, they, what the planning product produces is sort of skew level uh, flows, skew level uh, distribution forecast, skew level forecast of, uh, you know, how should uh, the freight flow. But what we do is we take that and we apply your transportation details on it. You know, your actual transportation network, where do you have capacity now, who are your carriers and, and so on. And, derive a shipment forecast out of that and hence a capacity transportation capacity forecast out of that. So our goal is to actually produce a forecast. Now you can produce a forecast as far as you want uh, uh, using this methodology, uh, but we think it really makes sense to, or at least the forecast would be most accurate over the next two, four, eight weeks, sort of the near to midterm uh, uh, timeframe. And so right now our goal is to determine this forecast and measure its accuracy and, and see how far ahead of time can we forecast, especially for modes like ocean, right? To be able to get, especially these days, to be able to get a, a ocean container forecast by lane four weeks in advance is very powerful because now you can go reserve that capacity and get advantageous rates on them. Uh, but uh, and and eventually, what we'd like to do is once we have this forecast, actually give you a way in the in the system to not only reflect the forecasts into your transportation operations, but also to be able to collaborate with your carrier and get commitments against that forecast. All right, so that is uh, one area of work that we are looking to extend LNM into. Uh, another uh, key area of work that we're doing is around sourcing. And there's a lot of work around sourcing that we're doing within the sourcing, our sourcing capabilities around usability, extension to different modes and you know, performance for high volume bids and so on. But another interesting thing here is to leverage LNM effectively to evaluate bid strategies. Now sourcing has an optimizer built in that will help you determine potential awards, right? Now for every such award that you wanna make, it would be really powerful if you could use LNM to say, well, how would this award strategy actually perform once it becomes rates in my system? And that's what LNM lets you do. So uh, th there's some of that already in the product. We're looking to make it more seamless and more powerful whereby you can actually simulate real operations with your forecasted award strategy and get a real sense of you know, what this would look like if you went ahead and awarded your bids this way. So that's another good example. And as part and parcel of this, we're also looking to do 
uh, more with our sourcing procurement uh, cloud product. They have a lot of uh, capabilities around the process bits of the sourcing. So being able to do, you know, a Q&A with your vendors and have that, you know, formal interaction with them, being able to do an RFI and RFP process. And then finally, when you get to the contract stage, doing all the signing and P's and, uh, 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 you know, uh, P's and Q's or whatever the term is there to sort of finalize that contract. So there's a lot of process capabilities in sourcing cloud that we would like to leverage as in the context of a transportation bid. So we are working towards that too. All right, uh, quickly touch upon global trade next. Um, again, global trade uh, is a really broad and deep uh, platform for to manage all of your trade management needs. So certainly if you haven't looked at it, please take a look at it. Having an OTM and GTM solution in one, one platform is extremely powerful. We are uh, one of the only vendors in the space who do that. And so really good capabilities that are already available. Uh, we've done a lot of work on trade agreements in recent past, uh, and especially in today's world, trade agreements are fundamental to anybody. And uh, we will continue to invest on that in the near term here to round out the capabilities, especially around multi-level bombs and add more capabilities there, make it more usable and some UI enhancements. So continue to work and invest in rounding out uh, the trade agreements capabilities. And the next big step for us in terms of sort of white space uh, in the GTM space is to cover duty relief programs. And there are many of these sort of duty relief programs in various geographies across uh, the world. And we're building sort of a generic infrastructure to be uh, for you to leverage, to track where have you paid duties and what might be eligible for a drawback uh, and apply it to all of these different duty relief programs that you might have. So that's, there's a lot of work going on there that will soon come in the product. Uh, last few slides here. Um, planning and optimization is a continual focus in every uh, release update of ours. Uh, we continue to uh, deepen and broaden the capabilities here. Uh, one of the things I'd like to talk about today, and, and we talked briefly about the ML capability. So we're looking very carefully at that. We think there's tremendous potential there to actually do machine learning embedded into the bulk plan itself, not to replace the you know really powerful engines that we have, but to complement them and help them make uh, better decisions. Decisions that the user wants to see uh, and so that you don't really need to go adjust our, our solutions much. It's actually producing the kind of solutions you wanna see. So there's a lot of work going on there. Uh, but another really interesting one that we've talked about for a while, I mean, we are starting to move on right now is this concept of, what we used to call a semi-fixed trip. The, the idea there is you have a shipment that you've planned. It's already you know, in execution potentially, or maybe you have reserved the capacity or it's tendered to the carrier, he's accepted it. And you know you're gonna have a container, a truck show up, uh, but it's only maybe 75% full. So the idea here is to be able for you to keep what's on it, and maybe keep some other details about it intact, but continue to add to it, both from an action perspective, make it easy for you to do that, but also in the bulk plan to be able to, as new orders flow in and you run new bulk plans, to add and fill it out. So that is something that I think would be very, very powerful. And it's something we're working on and hopefully we'll have in the near future. All right, let me move on to uh, execution and settlement and touch upon that briefly. Uh, Kathy talked about our doc scheduling workbench and doc scheduling enhancements. There is more work to do there. We are looking to do that. There's a lot of good capabilities that we can bring to, to, to bear to our existing uh, doc workbench. Uh, void schedules, uh, we, we have the ability to take in void schedules today. Uh, 
it's it's sort of an a, uh, an interface and it's it's a little cumbersome so we're looking at seeing if we can do more of a rest api uh, type approach where we can consume it directly from some of the portals that have apis for it so that will add uh, more power uh, for you to update the schedules in a frequent basis uh, into otm um, more shipment group work. There's a lot of work in shipment groups already in the product. There's more capabilities that we can add. Uh, the public tracking API is an interesting one that we'd like to look at, which is the ability for you to just provide a reference number to your customer, like a tracking number that you might get from a FedEx or a UPS, and have the customer be able to track their shipments without actually doing any logging in and things like that. Just be able to use that reference number and get the status of that shipment. So I think good, powerful stuff that in this more settlement work coming to uh, uh, that, you know, we've continued to do work. There's work recently on settlement. If you haven't seen it, it's good to go take a look around split billing and whatnot. And we continue to look at that space also to do more work. My last slide uh, on business intelligence, there's a lot of work going on in the business intelligent, uh, intelligence front. As you've seen, we've re-platformed to the latest BI platform that Oracle has. Brian uh, has talked to you about the DV capabilities that came with uptaking that latest platform, data visualization capabilities, which is really very powerful, really uh, you know, great, graphics, look and feel, also more flexible uh, use of BI. Uh, and, and so, you know, all that's there. We've also embedded it in the workbench as Kathy and Brian talked about. So very powerful, it's at your fingertips now to go look up BI against a, a, a transaction or shipment, for example. But what we are looking to do is actually extend DV, which runs against your analytics data today, what we call the HD schema but extend it to actually run against your transactional data. So the ability to run DV dashboards and analytics against your actual transactional information in OTM would be very powerful. So that's something that we're looking to do, which then also leads to our business monitors, which are very important and useful capability today where you can actually monitor for exceptions it's sort of a text-based display today, but once we have DV against transactional data, we can actually give you a graphical business monitor. So imagine if you could actually see what, your, what is going on in your network right away as you know, any exceptions that you're tracking, you know, shipments rejected, shipments tendered and timed out and things like that in a graphical manner, right? So that's what that is about. Hopefully we'll, do that soon and, and be able to provide some out of the box and provide you the capabilities to configure more. One last thing I wanna to touch upon is Fusion Analytics Warehouse, which is probably a unique solution in, in the entire market, which provides you a BI platform across the entire supply chain, indeed across more than just the supply chain, right? Across ERP cloud and HCM cloud and brings in data to actually let you do end-to-end -end analytics in that one platform. And what we're doing right now is supporting that and doing the work required to actually make logistics data be part of your FAW analytics. So that's coming and that will give you the power to actually do things like a perfect order metric or whatever, you know, end-to-end -end supply chain analytics incorporating actual transportation, warehouse, global trade data as part of that. So that is, uh, we are very excited by that, especially around sustainability metrics. We're looking at doing sustainability dashboards. And as you can imagine, a corporate sustainability dashboard will go across every, you know, every part of the supply chain. And obviously transportation is a very critical part of that. And this will also give us then the ability to provide sort of a generic interface for you to extract data easily out of OTM and take it to other data lakes if you so choose. So that'll, that, you know, we are looking at 
not only supporting FAW and driving data to FAW, but also making that available if you need it for generic bulk data extraction. I think that was my last slide. Hopefully I've left a few minutes here for Q&A.